trait this way. And you see that it creates three cubes. If I run it again, we have one plane and two spheres. And if I were to run it again, two cube and one plane, maybe I can push it a bit to eight shapes. Yes. <laughs> so this is very cool. This little uh, tool. Welcome. And let's dive onto the 3D Python setup and ultimate beginner's guide. So just to put you in the mood, um, this is the result that you will get at the end. So before you are this very sad engineer or researcher or student that doesn't know how to get a very clean way to get started with Python. And at the end, you will be able to have a working setup and you will be happy. <laughs> so that will be the thing. We are going to move on to a seven stage process. And without further ado, let's dive right in. Step one, environment setup with Miniconda. So in here, it's very simple. We go onto your favorite web browser. In here, it's Chrome. And you go onto docs.anaconda.com slash Miniconda slash Miniconda other installer links. And in here, you see that we have a way to download Miniconda, which is a, um, a lighter distribution of Anaconda with almost nothing. So it'll make it super easy for us to install everything. I will take the one Python 3.9. It's good that you take this one if you want to have the same libraries down the line that works pretty nicely for you. So you save it, you wait for it to, to finish to download. And after a while, you just launch your little installer on Windows. I agree and I install it just for me. This is what I recommend for now. And you install it in a specific destination folder. So I leave it as the base destination folder and register Miniconda as my default Python 3.9. That is OK for me. Uh, and you can add that to your path environment variable. At this stage, I don't think it's necessary if you want to go as quick as possible and be as lightweight as possible. So once the installation is finished, you just, um, yeah, I will uncrush that and, and that. So now we can launch Miniconda. So when I go there, you see that I have Anaconda prompt Miniconda 3. So I will execute that. And what happened is that with this little black screen with a common line where we see that we are in the base environment. So we will want to create a new environment. It's like uh, maybe a new house or a new room into your house, let's say, that you want to isolate from the rest so that whenever you install new stuff, you are really into a controlled environment. So for that, I will do conda create n for name and the name of your environment setup. Um, setup, I will call it, or new setup, maybe, new setup. And I will define the Python version that I want, so 3.9. And that's it. I press Enter, and it will retrieve whatever it needs to install our base environment upon which we'll extend what we are going to do. So as you can see here, it asks me to proceed. I type Y and Enter. It will download the various packages that are needed. And this is it we have a new environment installed. And if I were to look at all the environment that I have installed, I could put conda env list, and this will showcase all the environment that I have installed and where they are installed. So as you can see, I now have a new setup that is installed here, okay? So now I will activate, so conda activate new setup, and it means now we go into our new room, into a new house, this is where we will move on to the next stage. Let's move on to stage two, which is package manager, and we'll be using pip. So in here, we can leverage conda, and that's it. But I highly recommend to use pip as package manager within conda environment and install all your library with pip so that you don't have conflict between installing with conda or installing with pip. So to have pip working inside your environment, we first have to install this package with conda. So conda install pip. And this will install the pip package for using Anaconda Package Manager. Let's move on to stage three, which is installing library like NumPy, Open3D, and the other ones. And good, we are good to go. Pip is installed. So now we can install various library with pip. And we'll start with the first one, pip install NumPy. And NumPy is a library for making numerical computation, working with matrix and things like this. So you may have error. This is because it's installed on other um, environments, some kind of libraries that are a bit annoying, but don't worry, you should not have those errors if you start from scratch. So NumPy is installed, very good. So now we can 
install another library, pip install uh, scipy, that is very cool to also handle a bit data structure and computation more efficiently. Um, another one that I would like you to have is pip install scikit-learn, scikit-learn, and this library is to basically leverage machine learning, a bit of deep learning very easily. So now we have three libraries that are installed that are super nice. And what else we could install is pip install matplotlib. Why? Because it handles a lot of visualization capabilities, or you can display, create some images. So this is always very useful. And finally, I will install open3d, pip install open3d, which is a library that makes it very easy to handle 3D data sets. So it's a bigger library, but it's very nice to work within Python without exporting stuff to visualize what we are going to play with. And we are good to go with the libraries. Let's now move on to stage four, which is installing an IDE. And in here, still in the same interface, the command line, Anaconda prompt with Miniconda, we are going to install one IDE. This will make things much easier than typing things in here or into your notepad, for example. So I will install one with pip so that we stick to something very simple, pip install, it's called spider, as you can see. And spider is very cool because it has all the functionalities that I want in an ID, debugging, profiling, exploring variables. We have a lot of possibilities and we are in our local environment, which is also very nice to uh, code and develop much more efficiently than using cloud-based solution. We are now ready to move on to stage five, which is exploring this IDE. And we are good to go. So at this stage, we have our environment that is set up, the package manager, pip that was used to install several libraries. And now we also used it to install an IDE, which is Spider. Now let's explore Spider. So this is very simple. In this environment in which we are, I will call it Spider and that would launch the application that has a GUI, which is an IDE, which will make it much easier to develop. So when you arrive for the first time, you should have something that looks pretty much like this. Um, I just switch my console here, but I think you have it here when you start off from scratch, right? So just to make a very short introduction about what and where you need to look. Here, this is where we write a script. So basically a script is a file with an extension .py, it's an ASCII file, that holds the Python code. And it's very useful to use that because then we can write everything there and execute and we'll see the result in the Python console. You could also directly use the Python console, but that means that every time you close a session, you need to restart from scratch. Whereas when you have the script, you can just use the script. And on the right side, you have a way to handle uh, files, plots, a variable explorer, and many, many things. Just as a matter of proving to you what you can do, if I were to do that and execute this, you can see that I have a little point cloud with a sphere um, that is displayed. And here in the console, you see the output. And now if I were to check out what holds, for example, the point variable, you see that we have a matrix XYZ. And on the right side now, on the variable explorer, you know that you see that you have several variables that were created thanks to the script and that are linked to the current session in the console. If I were to close this console, you will see that automatically all the variables are scratched. So this is very handy, this spider ID. Usually we will write code in here and we will execute typing that or that when we work in cell mode. And I will show you right after what I mean with that. Um, at this stage, I think that's pretty good that you know what you can find in this GUI. All right, almost there. So let's now move on to stage six, which is structuring our code for first end applications. Okay, so as you can see here, I'm in a folder, right? So in here it's region growing and you have several subfolder in it. So I have three subfolder, one which is code, one which is data, and one which is result. When you start from scratch, it's very good to have this way to organize your data and everything that you store like this. In the code folder, basically you put your code and here I have a subfolder with an app that can be executed. In the data folder, this is where I have my data. And in the result folder, this is where I output things that are computed by my code. Okay, so if you code standalone application, standalone script, this is very, really, very, 
this is a very good way to get started and dive deep without getting too much into perfect code structuration with a project uh, file and readme and things like this that come out a bit later. And finally, it's time to move on to stage seven, which is our first script. Okay, so first create a new file. I will delete this one it's just for you to, to ensure that you have a new file. You can save this file, right? And, and I will create a new folder that I will name first steps. I go into it and I create the code folder and here the data and the result. I would create them if we were to use data and export stuff. So for now, I will just go into the code folder and type baby steps.py and I save my file. Okay, so now let's write some code. We are, and I show you here, we are in the new setup, right, environment. So this is very good. Now we want to make sure that everything that we express is related to our Python file. So I make a right click and I make set console working directory so that he knows everything is expressed based on the specific path of this Python file. In the script, we are going to import libraries that I used by the sequence of action that we will define right after. So you don't need to import right Winsol Open 3D, Winsol NumPy, Matplotlib and Ckiller and such. If we don't use all the libraries, it's not useful to import them all at this stage. So we'll just import two, so import numpy, and we give an alias np to, to go quicker by calling this library and using specific function from this library and import open 3D as oh, 3D. All right, so I will just share with you a um, very simple function, and that's what I define here. I generate a random point cloud with 5,000 points, and I also want to be able to decide how many shape I want to have in a specific scene, right? And I want them to be sphere or cube or plane, okay? So um, that's all that it does. If you want the code, you will find everything down below. And now let me generate a random point cloud. So to generate a random point cloud, I will create a variable called point cloud, and I will call my specific function that will generate a random point cloud. If I leave that empty, it means that it will use the basic uh, parameters that I set in here. If you don't put them as a placeholder, this will not work. So in this case, it will work. And afterward, we'll convert this specific point cloud to an open 3D object, which will be used in this case to just visualize with the open 3D back end, all right? So now that everything is written, I save my script and I basically just run it, okay? And as you can see, it creates a sphere and this is fantastic. This is your first script that can create and generate a synthetic data that you can use afterwards, right? And let me show you that you can actually um, like run it several times and see the randomness effect. So I am going to create a cell with this little topic and random experiments. This is what I'm going to do. And by pressing shift and enter, it will run only the cell, run current cell, okay? So let me do that. And you see that now we have a cube. Let me try it again. We have a plane, we have a cube, we have a sphere. And if I were to change the parameters inside, so let's say I want 10,000 points and I want the number of shape to be three. Let's try it this way. And you see that it creates three cubes. If I run it again, we have one plane and two spheres. And if I were to run it again, two cube and one plane, maybe I can push it a bit to eight shapes. Yes, <laughs> so this is very cool. This little uh, tool, you have it at your disposal, right in the links below. Feel free to experiment with it and extend it if you think you can extend it. And congratulations, at this stage, you know how to approach all the stages to create your first Python experience. In here, we arrive to the end of this little guide on how to set up things. It will act as a really a base for all the other tutorials that you can find. You can always fall back here to make sure that everything is working smoothly on your site. And you can always extend it by using other IDEs, using other libraries. As it's in a modular uh, fashion, it was constructed in a modular fashion, there's are things that you can do. 
And as always, feel free to download just down below. There is a PDF of some of the slides with specific notes that you will find um, and help you in your coding adventure. So let's see what you create and let's see each other in the next one. Bye-bye.